Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's uh, Adam and Ashley here out in Salt Lake City. We're actually in Hooper. Um, here, let me help you out here. Just go like this. Uh, hmm. Oh, right there. All right, sorry about that. We had to we we had to get live on Amazon as well. Uh, Adam and Ashley here, um, down at the uh, Time Warp Studios, just outside of Salt Lake City on Hooper. It's like we got John Hayes, we got Mike. My, I think I saw Mike on there earlier. Um, looks like Chris. Chris is in the house, Cincinnati. What's up, Ron? Taters Toolbox. We'll see you every week. Appreciate you. All right, guys. Well, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start out by using the uh, 600 grit sanding sponge, and we're going to knock down this this hood like we usually do. Do. I'm just going to sand it down and get the gloss on. That way the paint has something to stick to. Make sure you always get your edges. I'm gonna use some prep all. I've been handling these things, so they probably have a little bit of grease and stuff on them. So you want to make sure you use some kind of a, a wax and grease remover. This kind of takes care of all of it all in one. All right, that looks good. Clean that off a little bit. All right, so I'm just gonna use a piece of duct tape that I have here. Hopefully it still sticks, let's see. All right, that's just gonna hold that in place, I think, because usually I have a rough time, it kind of slides around, this'll do it. All right, so, you guys are probably wonder what we're doing here. What I what I have planned for is um, I did print out. I, I kind of looked online, looked for a, a design that was pretty easy that um, I know that I could do, and then I know for sure that you guys would be able to do this too with just a little bit of practice. Um, I just printed this. I found it online. Just googled it. Pinstripe. Uh, happened to find this one looked pretty easy. I thought my tape lines would follow it pretty easy, and then it would work around uh, with the center right here we have. Um, I'll probably modify it a little bit when I tried it earlier um, to kind of test it out to get the thumbnail to this video. I uh, I did skip a little bit of this. I kind of it didn't seem like it needed it. It seemed longer than what I had it. But I'm just going to use this as reference and uh, I'll just kind of go from there. But I do plan on a couple of things with this is um, once I lay out the tape, I do plan on if we have enough time, um, which we should, uh, ha we'll either do some silver or some... Uh, copper leaf or we'll do some kind of leafing in the center of that and then probably frame the two edges out and do those as well in either a silver or a copper maybe we'll do it in something different who knows but uh for sure i want to show you guys um the uh laying down this kind of a pinstripe pattern uh or i'm just gonna do this by eye um and i think you guys will be able to do this too which is a little bit of practice All right, so I'm using the 16th inch, the smaller uh, lime line. You can either get this this in 16th inch, eighth inch, or quarter inch. But uh, we're just going to stick with the 16th because it bends better. 
I feel like that'll look good with those lines. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball the center of this. First thing you want to do is make sure you get the center line. You can you can measure it. You can do whatever you want. Looks like I might be off a little bit. Let me redo that. You can see where the fr the front of this kind of peaks. It's kind of off a little bit. Maybe I can get that a little bit better. All right, everything's going to start off that center line. So you can even this even kind of has a center line to it. I'm not sure what exactly it is. Um, but uh, we're gonna follow these at first, the center, and then uh, kind of just work out from there and see if we have enough room to, to do this. If I did it to scale, it looks like it would fit just about perfect, but I probably won't. Uh, we'll see. It might be completely different. So what I'll probably do is, uh, it kind of peeks out of the center right here. Let me make that a little bit straighter. Let's see if I can. Let's try that again. I had a little bit of a bend in that tape once I, I turned it that sharp. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the tape on this other side as well. Uh, one thing you wanna do that's really important when you're trying to make it, um, obviously you wanna make this side the exact same as this side. So what I'm looking at is the negative space. So when I lay out this tape, check it out, like look, look right here. Look right here. You see where the negative space is? These little triangles? That's what you want to look at. That's why you don't want to trim that line or the center line or anything when you get that first line done because you need to be able to see this right here to see how close you are to matching up to the other side. So first things first is I kind of have the, the 16th laid out, like kind of hovering across the top. And um, once again, see how this is way out here? I just, I, I'm going to follow it. I'm going to start right there. Then I'm going to find my angle. See it right there? That's pretty dang close right there. So that's that's one of the marker points. We also have a marker point right here. So check it out. See that little sliver of a triangle that goes in? You want to you want to mimic that on this other side. That's how important the center line is because so, it'll show you exactly what's going on. So it, like say like this, I took this angle. Obviously, you can see that's wrong. I'm going to be headed way out. It's not going to look right. See how, how I, when I bring it in, that's a little bit too far. See how it's too far? And there's, you know, right there. So we have a lot of marks here. We got off a little bit here because I was moving it around. But let, once again, we're going to match that up. Keep the same angle, match that up. And then we're going to keep an eye on this whole side, trying to match it to the other side. So we're looking at the negative space in between and just sometimes it takes a few shots especially if you're new um just keep trying you'll get it close enough to where it looks good okay so i can already tell right now that see how i went in too far i didn't bow out far enough this outside that side's a little bit fatter so we'll go ahead and pull that no big deal as long as we're not pulling really hard on the tape or, t or making uh, really gnarly curves, you can reuse the piece of tape that you're laying out. Okay, so let's try this again. That looks better. But see how I went too skinny right there? Let's just try it again. Let's pull it one more time. Oh, 
How's that look? Mm, doesn't look too bad. Let's try it one more time. That I could live with that. see that one yeah that's not too bad i give it one more just to make sure <laughs> okay there we go i concentrated really hard on that one somebody so wants to know how and why you tape with gloves they say it looks impossible and difficult um, it's not that hard. It's not that necessary either, really. More or less, I just don't want my hands in the video because I have like paint all over my hands. I probably have long nails or something. <laughs> so I just like to cover up my hands. It's not a big deal. I'm used to wearing gloves. After a while, it just becomes natural. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and trim these right now. You don't have to trim everything, but I want to kind of get an idea. So I'm not perfect right here. Um, and I might straighten that up later, but, but once again, don't need to be perfect. Pinstriping is not perfect. Okay, so we got the center part done. That's a lot better than what we have there. So we're definitely we're doing something different, which is fine. We're just using this as reference. All right, so I'm going to do maybe we could pick what's next. You know, it looks like this rolls over the top. Uh, maybe we'll do that. We'll just start. It looks like so with the two style lines on the hood, it kind of gives you a reference line without having to tape anything down. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I might, you know, I might as well even just take it straight to this corner right here. And then um, meet it with that. That way I have reference over here to do the same thing kind of pre-plan it out make it easy on myself okay so that was easy and that looks pretty dang good looks like a toyota symbol <laughs> right almost not quite um so i'm not going to use all this tape up here but it was nice that i was able to use that corner and this corner as a reference to wrap that all the way around uh basically the only thing i was kind of doing uh like freestyle looking at is to make sure when i dipped down into the the middle here um that i was going to start my way up so that was the one thing i was concentrating on was like just gradually bringing it there and then once i hit that i was going to start my way up aiming for this corner which you can see i'm a little bit lower right here than i am here which it's uh it's gonna be fine we're not even going out that far really and then um back up into this corner so that was good for the first go around on that i'm proud of myself on that one so it's usually a little bit harder than that maybe not depends all right so i have that laid out um and this is going to determine where the point starts so you see i can lay this out anywhere i'm just kind of hovering across the top so right here, we're just going to figure out our angle, which we'll do. That looks good right there. Okay, so we're looking right here. We're going to go down and swoop up like somewhere over here where it looks good. So let's see what we can do here. Let's try that again. Okay, I like that one better. I'm gonna go ahead and rip the tape right there. So we got that line done. Um, let's go ahead and while we're at it, we'll go ahead and do the other side and get, and get that finished up. So once again, so I'm looking where it overlaps I'm looking at this point right here because basically that's I'm gonna do about the same thing you know considering it's not perfect I might make up for a couple little things here and there but you know maybe make something a little thicker or thinner 
but what I'm looking at this point and that point, and then also this inside point, which is very important, this inside point. And then when I bring it around, I'm going to want to try to do the same thing I got going on here. Just swoop it around, you know, natural, trying to flow it as best you can. Okay, that wasn't, uh, it looks like I maybe be a little bit high on this side. Um, if I was looking at it, it's a little fatter here. I could have came in a little closer, uh, a little sooner, looks like I got. Uh, but am I going to live with that? Let me check this out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it one more time. But I feel like we could we could have lived with that line and you really wouldn't even know. All right, this one looks about the same as my last one, exactly like it. So I'm going to go with it. <laughs> I don't think I changed it up one bit. That looks exactly like the way I did it. Uh, but that's fine. You're going to know that. Uh, let me see. Let me look at this. No, let me give it one more shot. Now I look at that. I don't like it. Let's pull it. Someone had a question about, they said, when you're doing the foil embossing, um, as they said the foil embossing you did before can you color it in gold or other colors do you have to clear coat the foil first uh you can put a candy over it yeah like a gold candy i guess that's what he's saying yeah for sure you can do that uh before or after you put the, the clear on it the mini of coats of clear you gotta do if you want it smooth you know all right, that one looks uh, pretty good. Looks a little skinnier there than it is there. So I'm kind of just doing the exact opposite. So I'm trying to meet that in the middle. Let's see. Yeah, so I'm going fatter and smaller back and forth. I'm going to concentrate on this one. We're going to get this one right now. Once again, check right there so we got about the same thickness there we're coming to a point underneath this that's part of my problem it's because i was starting way earlier okay so that looks better there because that's why it was thick but we'll see if i can make this happen okay i'm liking that okay much better i like it we're going with it. Let's check out what we got next here. So it looks like uh, this. Okay. So we're here. Way down here. And then we're going to follow that line a little bit. You know, just kind of double up. And then come to a point right there. That's easy. This one's way easy. So once again, we're going to find where the point's going to stop at. It is going to follow that tape line for just a little bit. See how it kind of, if we want it to look like that, we, I think we do. Okay. That's a lot different. I started it way early there um let's let's do that one more time maybe that was too too long all right that's better And then it looks like so it's going to come off at of this point. We'll and we'll cut that up here in a minute. Um, but so that's going to come up and around, comes to a point here, and then we're going to wrap it around. Looks like it's going to come right underneath, right there. So let's. So now I'm just going to kind of eyeball it to where I know it's going to look good. Like I don't think you really want to come out like an angle like that because by the time you wrap it around, that's going to be uh, pretty huge. So. Uh, 
kind of eyeball it, see what looks good. You can always pull the tape like we've been doing, you know. All right, let's uh, let's look at that. that. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. That looks good. It's definitely different than that. Could have been a little fatter right there, but we'll go with it. And what we'll do here, another little trick for you guys. Um, if you're if you're wanting to start this point, the same as this point, since we don't have like reference marks here and here we can use this, a piece of tape and I usually like to go like maybe an eighth and an inch above where they uh, overlap. So you can see, you can see they overlap right there and that's where we're going to trim it. So go a little bit above that. That way you have room and then see how I'm just kind of looking at the negative space here and then just taking that uh, horizontal line and just kind of running that across just for reference. This is just for reference right here. So now we know where to start this at. The the uh, one thing we do need to figure out is, okay, so we're starting. Wait a minute. Is that right? Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm starting here. I'm going to come around and roll around just like I did on this one. And I'm going to meet in the same area right down here. So this one's going to be a little difficult, but I think uh, for sure we'll be able to get it in, in at least a couple of tries. Maybe the first try if we're lucky. If we're really lucky. Not too bad. Look at that. Uh, yeah, we could probably live with that. Look, I, but right here is where the problem is. Uh, problem lies right here. Because uh, you can see where it just doesn't even... That triangle doesn't match up with that. So we should be way down here, as you can see. But we started off good. Everything. Yeah, this is where we messed up right here. You can see it should have been fatter. So maybe the angle a little bit. Chris gave you a $20 super chat. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, Chris. Appreciate that. And it looks like we may have got it on that one. Oh, no. Look at that. Let's see. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm okay. We're okay. Yeah, I'm looking here and, um, you know, we were off on a little bit of a distance here. You see how that doesn't exactly match up with that. Yeah, so if you're to nitpick this thing, it's not going to be perfect, um, but I could peel that off and do it. But we're going to show you that it's still going to look great. Even though everything is not perfect, it's still going to look great. And uh, nobody's really going to notice, so, uh, except for everybody that I mentioned this to. All right. Uh... We're going to go ahead and trim up areas now. We will. Am I missing the line? No. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, I am missing the line right here. We're supposed to go up, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm just wrong. Let's go ahead and pull that. I thought something didn't look right. My eyes were playing tricks on me. Did you catch that or somebody else catch that? I did. You did? <laughs> well, you guys let me know if I'm doing something wrong because it could be I could be completely off and I can't even tell. Uh, all right. So, yeah, problem is I didn't even come off of this right here, this point, which uh, I'll go ahead and trim that right now. That way we have, there we go. That way we have that point. Um, so let's, let's try this again. Let's do it right. That'll give us our reference line there. And then maybe we'll just do one just right above right there. Okay. 
So I'm making this line right here because we got to do that before that one rolls back. All right, all right. Sorry about that. Confusing everybody. Can kind of line it up, see where it starts right there. See how it's go skinny to fat. How's that look? Be honest. Not too bad. Whoa, looks a little fat right there, right? Not too bad. Let me go ahead and do that one more time. Like I said, guys, this really isn't an easy thing to do. It's just, uh, you gotta step back, take a look at it, move some lines. Okay, that one looks way better. You can see we're looking at the distance here, right here and here. That's what we're looking at is the fatness of those two because those are basically making the same shape. That one's all huge, it's gonna look different. But it, so far everything's kind of jiving. There's a couple things that are off, but by the, by the time all the lines are done, it's gonna look fine. So let's go ahead and pull. Pull this and get it out of the way. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and trim, trim this right here. All right, so now, okay, we're back at it. This one should be way easier. I was going off the wrong line, so. We still got that marked out there. And what I'm doing is I'm looking to make, create this same shape right here. So that's what I'm looking at. Hovering the tape across the top. Let's see, that's obviously not the right angle. You can see right there, looking right here. We, what angle, about right there? Oh, no. I know it swoops in. Okay, I think we're about right there. And then I'm going to stick that down. And then we're going to make this roll right there down into the center. Oh, that was much easier with that other line. Holy crap. Trying to make that one work, not knowing what was wrong. All right. Looks good. I'm liking it. That looks pretty close to that. Good enough. Um, let's go ahead and trim our lines. Right there and then I'm following this edge right here that's good all right where are we at next okay these are crossing over so these lines going in here, I'm actually going to delete that part out because we're kind of running out of room. I'm probably going to come out like this and then um, down into the center right there. So I do need to, I'm going to go ahead and trim this right here. I'd actually need to lift that up. And that one. Pull this guy here. Get rid of those two lines. Go ahead and keep that center line in, in place. So very important. I pulled this line up. Um now we we can easily change the angle and we don't want that to happen because we want it to be smooth so i will pull it up just a little bit to get that angle going and make sure that it's not going to square off right there which it kind of did but that's not too bad 
Same thing with this. You know, angle it to where it looks like it flows natural right there. And then try to do the same thing on this opposite side. And then we'll, we'll come off of this. So, so far, so good. We're going to go ahead and so that kind of comes, wraps under. We will take this. Maybe right there. And then bring that into a point right there. So we got the first one done. Now the second one, so we just want to like, once again, you could measure this out if you really wanted to. You could put a piece of tape line there if you wanted to, and it further kind of triangles everything's out so you could have more reference points. But I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Like right, right there. Okay, so I have my tape line down. I'm still hovering on the tape. And then I'm going to move that. I can already tell them off a little bit, so I'm going to pull it. Try one more time. Yeah, not too bad. Let me try from the other direction, maybe. Pull the same tape line. Oh, yeah, that's the ticket. I can see much better that way. Sometimes you just have to do it and start from the other direction. Because that way it was way easier. You know, I can... It's pretty close. Not perfect. Uh, lines are off here a little bit, but... Um, so that looks good. So we have those overlapping. That coming down. Into a point, And we're going to go ahead and trim these up. Couple of questions. So somebody is wondering when you're going to get this um, spinning tools back in for the leaf. They should be in uh, hopefully next week. I'm waiting for them to ship in. They are finished though. Just waiting to get them. And then somebody is asking if you're related to Rob Vanderslice. Related to him? No. He my buddy. No, I just barely met Rob, like, this year. All right. Uh, okay, so it seems like we'll be able to pull out the center lines now. Let's go ahead and trim these up, these last ones that are kind of just hanging. You have more videos out? He's supposed to be. He said he was going to. All right. So it looks pretty good. I'm going to do, um, I might accent a couple of lines in here. I do. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me first pull out this center line. And uh, also, since we're going to, what time is it? How long have we been on for? Okay. Real time. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and this shows it overlapping over the top this stripe but since we're going to be leafing the center of this um we will uh i'll go ahead and let it underlap for the reason why is i really don't want to break through the leaf right there i it'll look it'll look better without doing that so just my spiel on that but anyway so we're going to let that underlap instead of overlap and then we're going to cut out our center line because we don't want that in there. Oh, really? Yeah, California is quick. Well, and a lot of this stuff, guys, is Amazon Prime, so it's in the warehouses. You can get it. Sometimes you can get the metal flake or the tape in the matter of like next day. Yeah, especially if you're in California or any any anywhere over here, you can get it quick. I know I can get it next day here for sure, right? Yeah, I think it did say next day. 
All right, so that's going to underlap. I feel like that's not, um, I did do some other, let me see if I can, uh, can remember what I did here. I don't know, that's probably good. We'll go ahead and stick with that. Fill in something else here, but I really want to get into doing this leaf. So we'll just kind of keep it simple. I'm going to cut out this center line as well because we don't want that. Someone said, can you do a demo on complex geometry designs with multiple mind trip lines? <laughs> kind of what? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I, I, I barely got past this really. No, it's really, uh, it's not that hard. It's not that hard. A little bit of practice. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and tape off, um, a couple other panels here. Maybe do, uh, something simple right there. So. Just what you would normally do when you have a panel job, you just kind of find the, you know, find the shape of the part that you're working with. A lot of times, I when I'm on using taping on uh, on Harley tanks, usually it's that same teardrop design that goes down the side because it just seems like it works so well, you know. Uh, Yeah, yeah, I pulled that out because I'm going to be leafing the center right there. But yeah, according to the photo. Make that a little bit smaller right there. Somebody asked, can I clear coat over little daddy Roth with your clear coat products? Hmm. I really don't have any clear coat. We have clear base coat. Um, yeah, good question. It's just a, a big daddy Roth. Is that, are you talking about just the metal flake? Little dad. Yeah. Little daddy Roth. Yeah. What did I say? Big daddy. I think it's the same thing um if you're spraying it out of a spray can i don't know if that would work or not but if you're just using the roth uh flake but yeah yeah you can do it you can use that in place of the limelight no problem once again just following the style line there oh pinstriping paint um, it's, it's kind of a risky thing, really. Uh, I would definitely let the pinstriping paint sit. I don't have any clear coat, so I don't know if you'd want to spray it with clear base coat, if that's what you're saying. Um, but anyways, if you were to spray it with clear coat, I think you'd want to let it sit for a couple of days before you did that. And then personally, I, when you do your first few coats and I'm no pro at, at, uh, clearing over pinstripes, cause I really don't do it the traditional way. But I, if I was to do it, I would do light coats to start. Like I would do like, literally I'd do like three light coats and then do like two more heavy coats to make sure you're not going to disturb whatever the oil base or whatever that stuff is. Okay. Not too bad. I still want to make this a little better. I feel like, I feel like since we took that center line out, it's not quite as good. Um, trying to remember what I did on the last one. Now I'm on the spot. I just don't, I just can't think of it. But before it was like so easy. My mind's a blank. What did I do last time? I can't even remember. Um, but we'll, we'll stick with it because I'm totally can't think of anything all right let's mix up some paint we'll get on to something new okay. 
So we're gonna what I'm gonna what the plan is here is um, I'm gonna mix up the uh, this shifting paint purple green blue green purple red green. Let's check this stuff out. Oh yeah, so this is a color shifting uh, metallic pearl, whatever you want to call it. It's pretty much both. If you were, if you were to ask me, I guess it's more of a pearl than a metallic. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna mix this into clear base coat, reduce it, and we're gonna spray over these lines. And after after that, um, I'm pretty sure we're good enough on time that we'll go ahead and um, do a little bit of leafing on here as well. But uh, if we get to it now. We'll definitely have plenty of time. So I have these little bottles here. Go ahead and get rid of that. That was just a touch up brush that comes with it. But having this thing is super handy because it does have a little marble in it. Oh, where are you going? Oh. oh. Okay. So we'll go ahead and use that. We got some Lime Line Clear Base Coat. Binder. Inner Coat Clear. Whatever you want to call it. Let's put a little more in there. Someone asked if Detroit has an autorama this year, are you going to be there? Uh, well, that'd be awesome. If I was, <laughs> I, I would love to go. I've never gone, but that would be awesome to go. Okay. So I did throw some reducer in there. It looks about right. Did about 50, 50. Oh, I measure it. Got another one over there? Okay. Well, I have this measuring spoon, but it broke. It's okay. What's it going to do? We'll do uh, two half scoops here. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Spilt a little bit. I'm gonna give this thing a good shake. Got that stuff all over. Oh heck. No. No hardener. Just uh this is clear base coat, inner coat clear. Um with the one scoop and some reducer to make it sprayable because Clear base goes too thick for the airbrush. It's too thick for the spray gun too. So you gotta have that reducer. If you're new, reducer is thinner. If you don't know what reducer is, it's a way to thin out your paint to get really down to the basics. Maybe if some, some people don't even know, but uh yeah, and, and, and it just it just flashes off. It just reducer just goes away, you know, once it just a way to transport the paint. Um, and get it thin enough to where it sprays out good. Okay, I think we might have this. Let's see what it looks like in there. Oh, yeah. So, clear base coat. Uh, a couple scoops. So, usually just one scoop. Uh, this would take two scoops, actually. Probably could have put a little more in there, but I think it's going to be fine. You don't need much of this stuff. And then uh, the thinner with the reducer. Thin it out.
let's let's put that in that outlet over there. seems working anymore. I think it broke. Uh, I think my uh, airbrush compressor just might have took a crap. Wait. Oh, wait. It's on. I heard it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> you guys almost got out of class early. Hey, what's up, Rob? Happy Thanksgiving. No, even worse. I think my hair might be flawed. Somebody asked, what brand is the color shift pearl? It's Lime Lime is the brand. All right, I just had to clean out my airbrush. We got that working. So I'm using a an Iwata Neo. It's the cheapest Iwata, but it works really good for what we're doing here. Okay, let's load up some paint. Now, since we're doing this over the black, it's going to have kind of a uh, ghosting kind of effect, I guess is the best way I can say it. And the, the fact that it's um, it's already going to chameleon like out to like purple, what is it, purple, red, and green, it, uh, it's going to look cool. All right, I'm gonna, um, I might just hit this with glass cleaner real quick. Maybe I don't even need glass cleaner. Maybe just a, a wipe will be good enough. No, it's gonna need glass cleaner. And that won't hurt the tape. Someone said, stupid question, does sunlight affect fading of colors if so does buffing over time bring out the shine uh if it fades buffing is not going to really help it i don't think uh if the clear coat's kind of faded it will um but if the color is faded it's not really going to help it um but these you know all all these colors it kind of depends on what you're top coating it with if you're using a good clear coat something with some good uv protection um, a lot of these are going to be just fine uh, you get into the more brighter neon colors, they're obviously not going to last as long, and they absolutely will fade. Um, but it just depends, once again, on what you're coating it with, uh, what kind of elements you're exposing it to. Um, there's a lot of variables with that. So you just know when you're doing uh, bright colors like that, you would over clear coat it. That, that's exactly what I do. Uh, I've never really had a problem. In bright colors, you definitely, they're a whole different, whole different animal. All right, we're gonna make sure the airbrush is spraying good. Let's check it out, see if you can, oh yeah. See, if it was the paint was too thick, it wouldn't atomize right, it, it'd splatter, and a lot of people have that problem when they first start out. And that's usually what causes it, because they don't know how to thin out their paint. They have to be thin, because think about it. The paint has to come out of this little nozzle, you know? It has to flow through a tiny little orifice right here, and 
it, you know, it has to be thin, almost like water. So I'm just gonna follow the tape lines. Someone asked what size needle do you use with that airbrush? Let's say that one more time. What size a needle? Oh, I think this is a, a 035. Yeah, you see here with an 035, it's spraying this stuff out really good. Hitter's toolbox said he just wants to say thank you. He's learned a lot in the last year. Um, and his first custom paint job is turning out killer. Yeah, awesome, man. That's good to hear. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, so I got the edges done, and now I'm going to follow. Kind of just brush over that. Someone said he bought some of that glass cleaner and it smells horrible. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know what smells good then. <laughs> All right. All right, that's looking that's looking really good. So definitely in the in the angles you're gonna be able to see it a little more. Um, what I'll do is I'm gonna mix up just a little bit of white. I think I might actually have some mixed up already. Somebody said, are you following the lines or coloring inside the lines? I'm following the lines. All right, I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to this. I'm gonna reduce this white out. Some reducer, really thin. And I just wanna highlight some of these areas. You can see how thin that is, super thin. I did notice when I, um, I might have to, you know, I might hit this background with something. Um, when I was wiping it, there is some kind of white marks, um, and I know they're going to turn out. I know they're going to show up when I clear coat this, so I'm going to fix this problem <laughs> by adding to this graphic. Because a lot of the best things, like if, if you're just like, like once again, if you're just a collision painter and you have to paint something just white or just black or just any um, any color at all, it's super hard because there's really no room for error. I can already see some errors coming out in this because right here I have some marks um, that uh, it, this is going to show up. I already know this is going to show up um, once it comes to clear coat. So I might do one of a couple of things, um, either put some kind of a texture on there, either a marbleized or I could put a lace uh, pattern or something like that. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and hit this background with a marbleized. Um, just take some, it's gonna take some plastic wrap. We've done this before, but in order to like, okay, say this was for a customer and they're like, oh man, yeah, they're gonna let us do what I, what we want on this. So at, at this point, I would say, you know, marbleized is gonna look great. Um, let's go ahead and, you know, talk to the customer. Hey, I'm thinking about doing some marbleized in this. What do you think? Oh yeah, that sounds great. So now you got a way out of this that, um, still going to look great. We're going to marbleize it because of these little errors here. It's only here and here. 
the rest of it looks fine. It's kind of where I touched it pretty much. Um, and also painting straight on plastic, you're going to have other problems too. And that kind of did happen. I could wipe this down. Um, I'm afraid if I wipe it, it's just going to make it worse. Um, but wiping it down and spraying it right after definitely wasn't the right thing to do because it looks like I even had some glass cleaner right here that, uh, but we're going to, we're going to take care of that problem by, we're going to add some marbleized around that. We're going to make it even look even better just by a mistake like that. So once again, we're all just, uh, tr you know, trying stuff and, and seeing how it looks, but, uh, that's going to be the way that we're going to fix it right now. Someone says, when you do your art, do you normally go dark to light or light to dark? Or does it depend on what you're doing? It depends on what you're doing. If you're using candies, you're going to go um, dark to light. If you're doing pigment colors, you're going to go light to dark. The reason being is because candies, you can apply one over the other. But once you go, like, say you use a brown candy, you use it and you put a gold candy over the top. Yeah, you it's going to tint it still just a little bit, you know, so it'll make it, it'll make it look a little different. So that's the general rule. That's the way I do it. It's not the only way to do it. There's so many different ways to do this and everybody does it a different way, which is great. But I just sprayed a little bit of that on there. Let's see. Hopefully we don't have any problems. Let's get that a little wetter. Someone said, can you tell me what kind of base coat that is? This, this is, is the limeline. Lime okay, there we go. That's gonna take care of that. This is the limeline chameleon base coat. It's just a base coat powder mixes in with the uh, clear base coat, limeline clear base coat, or any inner coat clear. Oh yeah, this is gonna be way better with the marble on it. Something with the static too, you know, painting straight on to um, plastic, dude, it acts way different than metal. You know, if this would have been base coated, I feel like it'd be different, but. Get inside there too. We don't wanna go too gnarly. It's just where we have the problems and kind of make it look even. Definitely in there. Someone said, I just finished my first paid pinstripe job video on my channel. I thought it was pretty bad, but the owner was beyond thrilled. Couldn't <laughs> stop staring at it when he got home. We are our worst critics. Oh, yeah. 100%. And then someone else said, once again, Adam, cool instruction on fixing a mistake. There's no such thing as a mistake. Just add to it. Fixing mistakes is half the art. Oh, yeah, it is. And it's actually better because I was just going to leave it with a blend. And that was my plan until I kind of saw it get a little funky. But then, you know, you always have escape routes, and that's really what this is. It's an escape route because we had some problems with it, and you can see. Oh, yeah, there's the color shift right there, you know. Once it's uh, this green, you got green there, you got red, and you got purple. Okay, I'm not going to worry about doing the outside edges because we're going to... Um, we're going to leaf this stuff. We're going to feel like I might need a little more contrast right here on these before I hit it with that white. I want to make sure those lines stand out. You know what I mean? So I want to make sure there's enough of a contrast. Okay. I'll go ahead and Clean the brush out. And we're going to throw in just a little bit of this white. We're just going to highlight just a few areas here and there. Maybe these tips right there. I think I still had some chameleon in there and it made it a little bit green. That's fine though. 
Looks like outer space. All right. That's gonna. So you got a little bling there, a little bling there. Yeah, that's gonna be great. Someone said two perfect people will think it's not done by hand, instead thinking it was all done by a stencil. It, true. Yeah, we could have made a stencil as made it hundred percent perfect, stuck it on there. That's another way to do it. And that's fine too. However, whatever gets the job done, really. All right, let's go ahead and we'll tape this up and get ready to do some uh, leafing. We'll go ahead and do the center one first real quick. On the paint, uh, yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, I don't, can't really remember offhand. Um, you know, I wouldn't keep, I wouldn't keep paint for more than like three to four years. I know, I know the bottles start going bad after like, I don't know how many. I can't even, I can't even say because I don't even remember. But um, it has a few years of uh, pot life as long as you take care of it and you make sure you, you're. You're not letting it get cold or freeze or anything like that. Someone said, can you mix two different jars of your pigments for more color shifting effects or would it mess things up? No, absolutely. You can do that. Yep. That's the best thing about it is you can, you can uh, make any color you want. Really, if you just get, if you get blue and you get uh, yellow, then you have green already going to be a different shade of green and you can mix it to any shade you want you know more yellow more than than blue is going to make a brighter green or you can take a the neon color you can splash a little bit of neon in the yellow to spice it up a little bit There's a lot of stuff you can do but yeah good question all right So we're going to go ahead and get ready to um, spray out some sizing glue. Um, this is mixed one to one with water, any kind of water, clean water. And then I uh, spray it on and we'll, I'll show you how to do that right now. I'm going to use the same airbrush. So you make sure you clean it out really good because we're using a solvent base right now and we're going to a water base. It's actually better to have your own airbrush for this, but as long as you take care of it and make sure you clean it out, it's fine. I use the same airbrush. Someone asked, when putting down clear after panel work, candy and pulling tape, what is the biggest uh, contributing factor to bleeding into your pinstripe lines? Oh yeah. Well, I would say the biggest factor of how it happens, a couple of things. If you're spraying and it's super cold, um, say like you're spraying under 60 degrees, good luck. <laughs> That's going to be real hard. Make sure you have the temperature up. Um, and probably the biggest reason is you're, you're hitting it too fast with clear coat, too hard at first. Cause what you're doing is you're hitting it really hard with a clear. It's, um, sucking the candy up in to the clear coat because it's so wet and it's sitting there so wet so long that they're kind of mixing in together and um, clear coat naturally self kind of flows, you know? So what's happening is it's gonna flow even over like a matter of maybe 20 more minutes or so, even doesn't, you don't think it's going to, um, it could uh, carry that candy into your your paint lines, which are supposed to, you know, 
be a different color. But uh, I would say definitely laying down uh, a couple of tack coats, like light coats, let them set up over the top. And that way you can kind of protect and create a barrier for um, when you start, you know, hammering it down with some, uh, some, some thicker clear coat. But yeah, once again, good question. Because that's a lot of people's problems. They'll get it all done. I see it all the time. They'll get it all done. They're like, oh man, I just, I ran it. And not only did they run it, it ran all the candy into their lines. And man, the only way to really fix that is if you can sand it off back to the silver, if you have enough room in between that. And usually you don't, you have to reflake it, which that happens. Don't, if it happens to you, or if it has, it probably has happened to you guys. If you're painters, you've done a lot of them. Definitely it has. Happens to all of us. Still happens to me sometimes. And I hate it. Just be light with it. Don't put it all on it, all the clear coat on at once. Two coats. Three coats, four coats, five coats. Six if you're doing light coats, you know? It doesn't matter. I mean there's a certain amount you can do too many for sure. It can only hold so much. Like you could if you try to put too much clear on, you know it. It just doesn't it just doesn't hold after that. You gotta really gotta sand it and clear it again if you want more clear. I'd say four to five coats max unless you're really spraying light. Okay, glue time. We have the glue mixed up. Let me... I will grab a cup here. And we're gonna do the 50-50 mix with water and that's why we're putting it in the cup. This is my water jug. Yeah, from last week? Okay. I drink out of this. That looks about right. All right. So that just made it thinner so it sprays out smoother. Um, now don't like, I'll go ahead and load this up, kind of give the spill on everything. Um, if you're if you're used to the regular way of laying down size with a brush, you're used to laying it on really thick. That's not the case with this. You're spraying it on really thin. And maybe we'll spray over here on the paper so and kind of get an idea. Okay, first of all, you wanna make sure it's clean. Any kind of debris or anything that might be sitting in there, you're gonna lay the glue over it. Then you're going to lay the leaf over it. And the leaf is so thin that when you go to spin it, it's going to tear through the, wherever you have the debris that's in the glue. You need to have your glue clean. That's what's nice about this. You don't have to wait 20 minutes, half an hour. You don't have to wait for stuff to come lay in it till by the time it's dry and leaf it. it you know, it's just too, this is too much. We're, we're going to go real quick with this. Okay. So I'm spraying off the side here and obviously it's going to absorb into this uh paper differently than what it would it would here but just to kind of give you an idea if you're spraying it like this to where it's beating up like that uh hopefully y'all can see that but you know you know how it is it just you spray something so thick it just all kind of wants to uh attract and create a texture and once it dries it's going to be kind of like more in one spot than the other that's not how you want it you want to put it down like thin like See how I'm way up here? I can't really tell because of the depth on that, the camera angle, but you can see that I'm just gonna lightly just pull, I'm just lightly pulling back on my trigger, just dusting it on. But I wanna make sure that I'm getting the whole area. I don't wanna miss my edges, which that's awfully close right there. Um, that should, yeah, that's pretty close right there. I wanna make sure I get a nice crisp line. But here we go. We're gonna go ahead and put down our first light coat. Like I said, that's it. That's all. That's all it's going to take for the first coat. Give it just a second. Someone said, do you ever paint down gold or tint your sizing glue for a little holiday insurance? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I don't because this actually has a little bit of pearlized in it. So it's actually clear. You can see in the bottle. Here you can see in the bottle. You can see in the bottle that has a little bit of like a pearl in it. The problem is, is we already have a pearl on here that looks almost exactly like that. But once it dries, it goes away. It just dries clear. Um, so, and maybe you can even see it here. You can even see that. It does have a little bit of a color to it. So it does aid in the fact that you can see it. Like when I sprayed that, it was pretty thin. I really couldn't see it. But if you were to spray it thick and it was to turn into a color like that, you already know that it's too thick. Like it's already starting to beat up right there. You see how it's just not, it's just creating a texture and that's not what we want. Okay, let's go ahead and another coat on this. A little bit heavier, but once again, I'm just barely misting it on. I'm gonna give it just one more second and then we'll put the last coat on there. Somebody says, is this glue the same for glass building? Gliding building? Mm, I'm not sure on that. Alright, one more. Okay. Woo! That got a little thick. I got a little crazy on that one. It's starting to beat up. That's okay. That's just fine. Because we're gonna we're actually gonna do two layers on this anyways to make it 100 percent perfect or pretty dang close to it. But yeah, I did hit that too hard. Maybe I can lift this up so you guys can see. See that? Right there is fine. Like right there, all that, that's fine right there. And then I got, I just went too hard. And then the, the good thing is, is you're going to be able to see what that looks like. What, what the cause of this is going to happen. It's not going to look as good, but we're going to layer this with two layers of leaf real quick. And you're not going to be able to tell. So once again, we're going to be fixing a lot of problems that we have on this because we're encounter, you know, things here and there. I got a little crazy with that. That's fine. Now we just need to wait for it to dry. Someone said, would thinned Elmer's glue work? Maybe. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. I wouldn't and probably would. I mean, a lot of stuff probably would work. This has been proven to work really well. It works really well. In fact, I have I wasn't even able to leaf until I found this stuff. And um, now I can. <laughs> but with the traditional methods of of uh, brushing it down i just not i'm just not good with a brush um and i always felt like it it took too long to dry and stuff always like like hairs would fly in it or something like that and then it would affect the way the leaf looked um the other nice thing about this stuff is we're able to relief it like we're going to leaf this here in just a second um and we're going to throw down a little bit more glue and then leaf it one more time that way and I usually do that anyways, if it's for a customer's parts, because if you spin it and you burn through or anybody that's done leaf and you spin it, you've burnt through hundred percent. You burnt through it happens all the time, which is that's the way it is. Um, so you have to be really careful on how hard you push. But once again, you want to push hard enough with the spin to make it so you can see it. Um, but you burn through and this is leafing it twice is kind of like a safety net. Um, it allows it allows you to have that extra layer, that base layer of the same color of leaf. And if you burn through, chances are you burning through two layers, not, you know, you have to be pushing pretty hard. Okay, that's just, just about ready. It's a little wet right there, so kind of beat it up. All right, I've got some silver leaf here. Oh. I think we're almost ready. Okay. Looks like we're almost ready there. Is that one piece going to do that whole thing? Huh. Not quite.
not too bad. Let's go ahead and we'll use another sheet here just to Okay. We got a roller here. And we're going to kind of roll that down to make sure we got good contact between the leaf and the, uh, the glue that we laid down. I can already see the problems that are, um, that we're looking at here because of that, the over applied, when I over applied that glue, I'm going to be able to show you exactly what happens. those edges a little better once again I kind of just press it down instead of wiping it that way you're not um, like if it's the seam right here you're not wiping away the leaf that you need it's better to kind of push it down to make sure that it's getting stuck you got to make sure you, you get your edges because I'm, I'm not going to pinstripe this. Obviously, there's going to be a pinstripe line, the the original pinstripe line. So we need this line to be really crisp. Can't have any jagged edges or anything like that. It's not going to look right unless you plan on re-pinstriping it. But that's not, that's not what we're doing here. We're going to rely on hopefully getting a nice edge here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and lift this up so you can see. See how it brought on that texture? Okay, if you're getting that look right there where it's not, see, this looks fine. Like I said, that was sprayed fine. And then I started spraying more and it started beating up and it created this texture that transferred to the leaf because the leaf's thin. It can't, it's going to take on the, you know, the whatever the contour of whatever the glue is. But now that we have a layer on there, this next layer that we're gonna do um, is definitely gonna mild that out. So we're gonna be able to take care of that. Once again, fixing fixing the problems. Yeah, you can, uh, on Amazon, LimeLine, you can just search LimeLine on Amazon. You can check the link, it's down in the description of this video, you'll be able to uh, just go to the link right there. Uh, I think it's under leafing supplies, or you can look up under all the limeline supplies to find it there. All right, so let's go ahead and do this one more time. We ain't gonna get so crazy. Okay, put that set up just for like 30 seconds or so, maybe even less. When you when you spray it on really light, it dries a lot faster. So, and besides the fact that you got to spray it on light or it ha or that happens. All right. One more coat. Let's see how sticky that is. Okay, that's getting there. Give it about 20 seconds or so. Make sure you get your edges too. That's, I always say that, but Make sure you're spraying over this area too. Like that way you're getting it. It's pretty even. Okay. That looks good. Give it one more second to dry. Yeah. Whoop. 
Whoops. There we go. You really want to try to, you want to lay it down smooth to, where there's no wrinkles, especially on the last layer that you do. Like if something happened and it wrinkled up, you're not going to save it. The best thing to do is just finish it up and do another layer over the top. You can literally do like three or four layers of this. So yeah, that looks great. I laid that one down real nice. Got it. This one's going to have a little bit of a wrinkle in it because I've kind of laid it down funky. No, not bad. Get it pressed down to the edge there. Back with the roller. Now see that that point right there you really got to get in there and make sure that that leaf is stuck to that glue because if not if you pull that that tape line it's gonna peel that right off yeah those are lime line too the little mini helmets they're in white now as well you'll be able to see them on there a little spot there i had to fix yeah you can get them in white now and they're probably easier to paint depending on the paint scheme if they're already painted white like if you're going to do a mini truck style on those little helmets the white's a way easier base to start on unless you're wanting a black pinstripe but There is. Well, is he asking if there is? Because I know there is. There's like a little long-haired brush that's kind of fat, skinny. You could pick up the leaf and lay it down. That's a good idea. I should get one of those. Okay, I think I got this pretty good. If this was a customer's job, I would literally do this for like five more minutes just to make sure that all these edges are down. In fact, I would go and look, like follow the edges with my eyes to make sure that all the edges were good. Okay, but good enough for this. Someone said, what size is thinner and standard for a I'd use a one inch. gonna pull this tape but we're not gonna pull our tape line quite yet all right 
we will uh, let's grab some tape. Where did that tape go? All right, we're gonna go ahead and leaf these two edges right here. Should we do this same silver ash, or should we do a different color? Same silver. This thing's looking like outer space. Well, actually, did you see my thumbnail? It has a moon in it. How did I know? Guess it was the vibe it was giving me. I don't know. Do both of these at the same time. All right, let's get some masking. Masked off. Let's check to see how much glue we have in here. Oh, could use some more. Someone asked how many sheets of silver leaf come in a package? A hundred. One hundred. Which will do depends on how many times it depends on it. It'll do a lot. Someone said, where'd you get the brown paper from? Uh where did I get that from? I think I ordered that on Amazon as well. I'm not sure if it's on my affiliate link or not. It's pretty cheap. It's only like five bucks. Like the cheapest thing I buy. Okay, so I'm gonna blow some air on this just to get it clean. You could use a tack rag. Um, yeah, just make sure it's clean when you start. I'm gonna try to do this one better because I overdid that last one. I don't know what I was thinking. We'll let that set up for, like I said, depends on how heavy you spray it. 20 seconds. All right, let's do our coat. Now I'm about I'm about like ten inches away when I'm doing this. All right, it's coat two. We'll do one more after this. Yeah, it's starting to get sticky. Usually after the second one, you can start to feel the tack. The third one tax it up enough to hold that that leaf in place which doesn't take much all right last coat yeah that one looks good Okay. Oh, got a little gnarly on that one too. Not too bad though. Went a little wet right there. 
you can even see where the color change is a little bit. That wasn't as bad as last one. This one's perfect. Someone said, asks, what's the best, oh shoot, what's the best way to clean your gun between colors and glue? You're mixing different media. Um, I like to use, well, just with the glue, I just use water usually, but sometimes I'll use glass cleaner. I'll throw a little bit of glass cleaner in there. And someone said, can you pull the tape and then roll it? And then, uh, spin it? Yeah. And then, oh, and then roll it? Uh, yes, you still can, yeah. For sure you can. Hands got a little bit of glue on them. Makes it a little tricky. All right, there's that one. Do the other side. No, I'm gonna try to get this done too. I don't think it's gonna happen. Oh, maybe. Yeah. The roller. You see how that just those seams just kind of blend together. So just make sure you're pushing down on it rather than uh, swiping it like that. You kind of want to make sure that it's stuck down before you're, you know, moving the leaf one way or another. Or it might you might end up losing it before it lays down. turned out really good you know it because it turns out really shiny this one's gonna be okay that one's gonna be the best so at least you'll be able to see in the middle not too bad This is looking good. 
I might not even leaf this one twice. I'll just might just leave it just the way it is. Because it's not necessary to really do that. But if you do want that extra safety net and you're new, I would I would do it twice. Or if something goes wrong, like too much glue or your overlap was funny or you wrinkled it when it's glued down, then do it again because it's just going to make it better in the next go around. And if it does bad again that round, do it one more time. Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and pull the tape off of this. I really want to get those edges as good as I can. Because this is really where it counts, you know? Like, I see a lot of people that send me pictures like, I can't get my edges as good as yours. Well, it's probably because you're not doing all this, you know? you got to really... You got to really, like, there's a little bit of a bridge gap right there. You know, you can see that it needs to be stuck down before you pull that tape or it's just going to make that edge bad. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull this tape. So we'll, we'll go ahead and just stick with the one coat of the, of the leafing on these outside edges. Okay, got the masking off. I think we're ready to pull off the the fine line, and then the last thing we'll do is we'll just do the spins on the uh, on the silver leaf, and that would uh, that's gonna do it. So let's check this out. Let me go ahead and we don't need that tape on the bottom of there anymore. Uh, foil cannot be turned, and yes, you can. You could do it with foil. You could use the glue with foil, too. Maybe I'll do that at the very end. See the leaf ripped a little bit right there. Oh, right there. You can see it ripped. If we would have had the second layer on that, it would have taken care of that. Oh, hell yeah, Chris. Yeah, hell yeah, right on, man. Thanks for that super chat. Yeah, sometimes it takes a lot to want to do these every week, but I don't know, they're good once we're doing them. We're getting better, right? Yeah. It's cold? Oh. Someone said, can you spray the sizing down, pull tape, and then lay down the leaf? Lay down the sizing how? Spray the sizing down, pull the tape, and then lay the leaf down. Uh, no, you wouldn't want to do that because that leaf, that leaf, uh, the leaf is going to want to stick to everything. So the fact that we're able to peel the masking off and the excess leaf comes with it, it's um, it's better. You can... And I've seen people do it, 
but like we have a texture here uh, with the marbleized it would have been terrible to try to get that out of the texture it's going to want to stick to everything like leaf will stick to almost paint like it won't stick for good but it sticks pretty dang good Try not to let that tape touch your leaf too. I've, I've ruined a couple of jobs like that where uh, like masking tape has, has touched the leafing and pulled it up or just colored it or yeah, you can do a lot of stuff. You really don't want to mess with it too much. Okay. Am I missing a piece of tape? Oh, right here, right here. Good eye. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, oh. So we're going to use the, uh, somebody asked earlier, what kind of, what size of spinner? We're going to use the one inch with the 5,000 grit pad on it. Looks like there's some paint on this one. Make sure it's clean. But, uh, that. you start from any, e either direction, it's fine. Take it and then just a quarter or a half a turn. I usually just go a quarter turn and lift it up and spin it just like that. About a 40 to 50% overlap. Let's make sure we get a good angle on this. There we go. You can see that color change. Look at that. Whoop. Oh yeah, that white might have been a little too gnarly for this thing, but that's fine. We'll see once it's cleared. Let's do this next one right here. Yeah, I probably can. I still got white in there, so. see that one there we go trying to get you guys the right angle on it Now this is the one we only did one layer on uh, and I did the glue a little bit thick right there. So you can see, here's what a burn through looks like. See those little black dots? 
yeah, burnt through those areas. Not the end of the world. I mean, but you're not going to be able to fix that. Like you're not going to be able to like patch that area up without you being able to tell. Um, so you want to make sure if we have issues like that with the texture and it's a customer's job, um, address that and put more leaf on it to make sure it's good before you pull the tape. Because at this point, if it didn't look good, you'd mask it up, re-mask up the line, ride back on it, mask it back out, do another uh, leaf. Or you could clear it at this point and then go back and do another leaf over that next clear session. But nobody really wants to do that. All right, let's see if I can get you a good angle on this. You can see how nice uh, that really turned out. This is this was probably the best section of leaf that I laid out. It was right there. You can see there's just a couple of issues there because of the the excessive glue, um, a little bit of excessive glue where it burnt through there. Um, looks pretty good right there, but this really laid out good. This is probably the best part. I'll probably go ahead and uh, just gonna hit that the edge of that again somebody asked you are you using just the weight of your hand to push down or about how hard are you pushing um you're spinning it you know you can always spin it a little more so i would say go on the, the if you're new and you don't know what it feels like um practice first practice and then um but i would say it's like yeah it just seems what would be natural without pushing hard i guess let the just put the friction there it doesn't take much weight at all somebody said can you reduce duck ducks dukes to make it sprayable uh, uh i'm not sure what that is if it's dux yeah i don't know you can try it try it i don't know what, what you've done with If it's a waterborne, you, you you would probably thin it with water. If it's uh, yeah, if it's something else, I mean, if it's a well base, you'd probably thin it with mineral spirits. I don't know. Somebody said, was wondering, do you get a lot of fan mail of others showing you their work? Work. If so, what's the email and have? Or will you do a fan appreci appreciation video showcasing others' work? Yeah, I get a lot. I get a lot. So much that I can't even really. Uh, I try to look at it and comment on it, and a lot of it's good. Like, people are freaking killing it right now. Some of it's like, it's unbelievable what I see. And and, and a lot of these guys are new, you know. Um, but, yeah, some of your stuff, I, I don't, you know, I don't really post it or anything like that, but. I always appreciate being able to see what you guys are doing. That's for sure. Somebody asked, um, how long can you leave the leaf without spinning? Um, I've left it for like weeks. It's a long time. All right. We doing stars on this. Is that what we're doing? Yeah gotta be real careful because i should have did it when the, while the leaf was taped up but hmm. okay i'm gonna go ahead and just uh i got some white in my airbrush here i'm gonna just kind of pull back on the trigger a little bit to get the tip loaded up and then we'll see if it puts stars on it or not 
You got a little flatter. There we go. That's going to be my best way of putting stars on, really, because the only way I can think of unless somebody has a better idea. Oh, there we go. See? One time someone told you a toothbrush. Remember? Yeah. I'm just going to do a little bit of this. I like it. It gives a little bit of texture. Yeah. Just here and there. I'm just loading up the airbrush and then just pushing the air out and it just splatters on it a little bit. And then maybe a little more right here. There we go. More okay. more of the top right. More of the top? Top right? Mm -hmm. oh, I can see it top right. Maybe you can't see it. Oh, maybe. Okay. Yeah, that'll help blend it in. I think I may have got a little too gnarly with the white right there. I feel like that might be overpowering. but Or maybe I should have did it over the whole thing. I don't know. We'll see. Want to throw some clear on it? We'll see. Or what? Yeah. Let's do it. We're going to go ahead and throw some clear on here. We got the uh, Car Rep 2K clear coat. This stuff's pretty awesome. I use it every now and again for uh, not motorcycles because I don't uh, cut and buff and this stuff's not the greatest. But if you're like doing a helmet or something or stuff like this, this is perfect. Okay, this is, um, so yeah, I think I've talked about this before, 2K in a clear coat. I guess the Ox or the uh, H2O and the air mixes with this and it, it hardens it, so. H2O. Not H2O, uh, yeah, H2O, the water in the air, the moisture in the air. Oh. I don't know what I'm saying, okay, let's go. I'm gonna do a light coat at first because that's just what I like to do. I don't need to go gnarly at first. Last time, I think I put my finger over the... Oh, yeah. I do not want to do that again. You put your finger on the button. <laughs> okay, we'll give that just a... Oh, yeah, those, I like those white stars on there. Me that too. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got a light coat on there. We'll give that just... Like I said, the lighter you make the coat, the less time you have to wait. So it's actually faster to go slower that makes sense <laughs> it is just super it's like if you were to hit this all with a big old wet coat right now it's gonna take forever for it to dry you spray like three coats like that you'd be done in like 10 minutes even letting it flash off between you know if not you're just trapping all the solids not good Okay, but usually I'd wait longer. I'm not going to though. Let's go. Oh yeah. Okay. Give it just another second here. Someone said, do you read all the messages you get after you're done? Uh, on the live here, uh, no, they go away actually. But yeah, no, you can always message me on Instagram or any on the YouTube videos. Like you can uh, this this video will actually run later on, so you can be able to go back and reference this if you need to. Um, and uh, yeah, you can also comment on the video, and then I will be able to see that. Okay. Wow, this is changing all kinds of crazy colors. So I really want to show you this. I'm glad I cleared this so you can see it. 
But uh, what does it look like right now? Ash? Purple? Purple. It literally, like, the the purple goes away, like, completely, and it turns almost, like, black and white. And then oh, it'll yeah. turn. Yeah. Green. Yeah, then it'll turn green. But, like, it literally, like, let me get this thing out of here. Purple. Oh, yeah. Black and white. Then it goes green. Yeah. Whoa, that's cool. Pretty. Yeah, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying not to touch it too much because it's like super wet. But look, it the purple goes away completely. Like it literally goes to a black and white. And then then it goes to green. This is a cool color. Mm -hmm. This is, where is it? Let me show you real quick. Right here. Right here. Purple, red, green. This will last you a long time too. But uh, definitely more on the purple side. And you can see the red in there. And then the green's just such a cool uh, flop of colors because it's not, those usually don't go together. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna be doing more with this stuff. That's awesome. All right, well that's uh. I think that's about it. What do you think, Ash? We all done? I'm cold. <laughs> all right. We're going to go. She's cold. <laughs> uh, all right. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Daniel, Tater, Antonio, Daniel, 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 John. Hey, thanks, man. Dan, Slickworks, all you guys for tuning in every week. I uh, really appreciate it. And uh, should have a move. I should have a video. Uh, probably not tomorrow, but. Uh, Maybe, maybe Friday I'll have the video of this uh, put out as well so you can see the the finishing products. But, okay. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving, by the way. <laughs> and then we'll see them December 1st. Okay. Thursday. Great. We'll see you guys. Bye.